is a four-year college the right decision? Because there are around 40% of people who are in student loan debt who didn't even get the degree. And so having that hard conversation about, you know, is a four-year degree the right thing is important. Hey, everyone. This is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. I'm back with Christina Ellis, and we are talking about money this week. We're talking about budgeting. We're talking about preparing our kids for college. We're talking about how to help our kids budget their money and basically how to live their life in a way that honors the Lord um, with what he's blessed them with. And and we need to be doing the same. So I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I know that it has been to me and I'm glad to have Christina back with me this week Um, or today. She's been with me all week, but I'm glad to have her back with me again today. Um, But before we get back into our conversation, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. Every child has a unique individual learning style. BJU Press has video lessons with engaging teachers to lead your children through each of their academic subjects. These experienced teachers will present lesson content from multiple angles so your children can absorb information at a comfortable pace. Visit their website at bjupresshomeschool.com to see what courses are available for your students. And let me just say, their teachers really are engaging. They are so much fun. We have been to the BJU Um, facility and we've met several of their teachers in person and they are so sweet and so fun and they really do love what they do. So if you guys haven't tried them out, try them out. Go to bjupresshomeschool.com. Well, Christina, welcome back to the podcast. I am glad to be back with you again today. And this has been such an encouraging conversation. Thank you for being with me this week. It's been fun. Thanks for having me. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So much fun. So really quickly, I, I wanted to ask you, you were actually in a documentary, um, that was, well, you tell me the name of it. I'm trying to pull it up here. Um, yeah, it's called Borrowed Future, and it's available for free on YouTube, and it is so powerful. So this whole conversation around student loans and people feeling overwhelmed by it, how to get your kids ready for college, if you're in that space, watch Borrowed Future, because basically our goal in it is to expose the toxic student loan industry and to help yeah. people realize that you don't have to go into debt to go to college. And so a lot of parents are like, yeah, but my kids, whenever I try to talk to them about college, they tense up, they think it's boring. Well, tell them that we're going to do a movie night and watch <laughs> for our future because it lays out different stories and it kind of paints that picture to help them realize why it's important to have these conversations now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to find that link to it in the show notes. It's actually the full title that I'm looking at is Borrowed Future how student loans are killing the American dream. Um, And uh, so that sounds like a really, we're all about documentaries here. I mean, we have a whole documentary on homeschooling. Yeah, Um, So we love documentaries. Yeah. It's wild. We literally in the documentary have an orthodontist who was in around a million dollars of student loan debt and watching somebody who was a doctor in tears because they feel so suffocated by student loan debt is wild and it's powerful. It's like you can tell students to avoid debt, but when you see people who are actually experiencing the repercussions, it's pretty startling. But we also offer hope and we offer stories of people who went to school debt free and kind of show them how to do that too. So it's powerful. Well, well, let's let's keep going down that road because we definitely don't want to be like that orthodontist who is in tears (laughs) years after um, you know, getting his doctorate, um, you know, what a wonderful career. I'm sure that he dreamed for years and years about becoming an orthodontist and he did not dream for years and years about the debt he would have to pay off after he graduated. And, uh, that's a hard place to be. So we talked a little bit about scholarships. Let's talk about what are some other ways that kids can get through college debt free. And, and even with scholarships, um, you touched a little bit on community service. Let's talk about that for a minute and then move kind of on uh, beyond scholarships. Yeah, so we've talked about building your resume and there's a lot of details we could go into, but I will say, especially as a homeschool family, you know, to focus on service. So when I was mm-hmm. in high school, I did over a thousand hours of community service wow. and it was a lot of stuff that I really loved doing, but it helped me stand out in the application process. Mm-hmm. So lean into that as a family, especially, you know, with some of your with, with some of your daytime, you know, activities bring service into that because it's like it can have the dual purpose of teaching your student, you know, generosity, teaching them service, those important principles that we want instilled in them. And it also can help them build their resume for the future. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we talked yesterday about contentment and helping our kids learn to be content with what they have. Service is a great way for our kids to learn contentment as well, because then oftentimes they see other people who are on the other side of it. And it's not always that every service project has to do with people who are less fortunate than us. 
but oftentimes it is serving the homeless or it is, you know, working maybe in, you know, a pro-life center, or, I mean, there are so many different things that they can do to serve their community that just shows a different part of life that maybe they're not so familiar with and helps them to go, oh, okay, maybe, you know, I don't have it so bad because I only have last year's iPhone and I don't have this year's <laughs> iPhone. I mean, you know, exactly. it just really does. It's all about perspective. So it really does change their perspective and helps them build their resume for college. And, that, and that's the thing is that especially with parents that have younger kids, you can help them develop this as a lifestyle service as a lifestyle where it's exciting. I think it's sad sometimes because I talk to a lot of school uh, kids in public school and it's like community service is viewed almost like a check mark that sometimes school schools require it or they're doing it just to put it on their resume. But it's like, it doesn't have to be like this. This can be something that students fall in love with for themselves. You can help them get involved in service projects that are yeah. exciting to them that hopefully they'll want to carry forward the rest of their lives. Yeah, 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 good stuff. All right, let's talk beyond scholarships. Um, what are some other things? Because I know obviously scholarships are not the only way to yes. get your college paid for. What are some other ways that we can pursue? Yeah, I definitely want parents and students really thinking through first, is a four-year college the right decision? Because there are around 40% of people who are in student loan debt who didn't even get the degree. And so having oh, wow. that hard conversation about, you know, is a four-year degree the right thing is important. There's a lot of people who are highly successful in the trades by getting a certificate, um, different ways to get an education. So just really asking those questions early on, that's important. And then I always encourage people to look at, you know, community college. A lot of states now have free community college. So maybe that's a good option to get your first two years completely paid for. And it can help you transition out of the house to not have to pay for housing and all those different expenses that can pop up. So consider that. Um, when you're in high school, doing dual enrollment is a great option to knock some of those credits out in advance. A lot mm -hmm. of times dual enrollment is free or for a super low cost. So consider that early on, because if you can get an entire year done before you go to a four year program, that's a lot of money saved. And also it helps prevent taking longer than four years, which is a whole different conversation and can cost a lot of money. I also encourage people to look at tuition assistance programs. So a lot of employers now are paying for college tuition entirely in exchange for you working for that company. But it's not even an exchange. You actually still get paid a paycheck plus get your degree for free. So I think that's a really exciting wave of the future is yeah. encouraging kids to look into those programs because you can build experience, you can make money and get a degree. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times you get to see if that field is really the field that you want to be in and pursue. Yep. Um, so yeah, that is a great yeah. way multiple opportunities. And then of course, you know, looking at scholarships and when you look at scholarships, look at the different merit-based scholarships at a school. So a lot of schools, they're not created equally. A lot of people look at the sticker price and they think that like, oh, this is what the school's going to offer. But you can really dig in and see, you know, what automatic scholarships does that school have based on grades and test scores? And what about, what's the likelihood that I'm going to get financial aid? Um, most schools have a net price calculator on their website. And that's a great place to start. You can type in your financial information, your test scores and grades, and they can basically give you a better idea of what you'll act actually pay at that school versus what's just the sticker price. And I think that's so important when you're making college decisions to have a better idea of what the situation is gonna look like for your family. Yeah. So, okay, we're like, let's take my family. You know, we're looking at my daughter possibly going to a university and now we're like, okay, what do we do? Where do we start? Who do we talk to? Do we go to the admissions counselor? And is there a, is there typically a person at a college who is going to hold you by the hand and say, let me walk you through this. Let me walk you through these scholarships. Let me walk you through these grants. Let me walk you through all of these, you know, CLEP tests, whatever it is. Is there a person who will help you do that typically at a college? Or is it just something that like, okay, here you go, good luck, and figure it out. Well, it varies so much between colleges. Some colleges are better about walking people through it. Some are not. Um, a lot of them are not. A lot of this process is going to be up to you as the uh -huh. parent and as the student to really take ownership of it. Um, the financial aid officer at your school, so there's a financial aid office. They typically deal with all the money stuff, scholarships. If you wanna to talk to them about what scholarships are available at the college, I'd recommend starting at the financial aid office. And the admissions office can point you in the right direction to the mm -hmm. right people. But financial aid is usually where you go for money type things. But I'm gonna be really honest. 
you really have to be on top of this stuff yourself. And I know it's overwhelming. There are independent college counselors that you can hire to help you through the process. But I mean, my mom and I worked through it ourselves. My mom has a two-year degree and I'm she was a hairstylist and had a hair salon in our home. So I often encourage parents like you don't have to be some PhD or master's right. graduate to be exactly what your students need. My mom literally had a hair salon in our home and both my brother and I got full ride scholarships. We both got master's degree degrees he mastered in um, biomedical engineering and it's like my mom helped us walk through that and encouraged yeah. us but you really have to be on top of it especially in the money space i was reading all my financial aid letters i was reading all my scholarship uh, d documents and award letters and making sure all the money went to the right places and i know that can sound overwhelming but it's worth the time and effort and especially when you can do it together as a team it's a really great bonding experience yeah oh so fun i i look forward to doing all of these things because whether it's college or just preparing our kids for leaving our home you know and moving on to the next phase of life us as their parents helping walk them through the process of what next is i think it's such a privilege that we have it's a responsibility that we have but it's also a privilege that we have to be able to prepare our kids. I mean, it's what we've been doing, right? The whole time is preparing them for life as adults. We're not raising children, we're raising adults. And so preparing them to be the adults that God created them to be, um, you know, is a high calling for us. So let's take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Christina. Um, you know, it's so interesting because my, my, um, my oldest, I know I keep talking about my oldest daughter. It's just because she's, she's getting so much closer to those adults. She's going to be an adult this year, which oh. I know at the very end of the year, her birthday is the day after Christmas, but I'm like this calendar year, she's actually going to be an official adult. And it just freaks me out in a good way, but also in a scary way, because I'm just like, how did we get here so fast? I cannot believe it. Um, but there's just so much I want to teach her. There's so many things that I want her to know going into adulthood because I want her, I know she's going to make mistakes, but I want her to make the least amount of mistakes possible. And I know that, you know, she is on social media and she's just, she sees the world around her. There is so much being thrown at our kids today. There's so much noise out there when it comes to managing money. I mean, just there, I mean, it's like, you know, how do you do your eyeshadow and your eyeliner? Well, here's also how to manage money. I mean, like it's just everywhere and they're always being fed all of this information on a continuous basis. And I think kids still think, well, if it's on the internet, it must be true, right? I mean, oh adults think that too, for goodness sake. If we hear it, it must be true. How do we teach our kids to really navigate through what is true and what isn't when it comes to financial responsibility? Gosh, you highlight such a good point because we've been talking a lot recently about all the TikTok money hacks that are getting these like massive amounts of views and you look at them and you're like, that is horrible advice. Right. And it's so important to realize that if you're not teaching your kids about money, somebody's going to teach them. Mm -hmm. And so parents be willing to have these difficult conversations. They don't have to be difficult, especially if you do it early on. And that's why we created the foundations and personal finance curriculum so that it's a easier process for homeschool parents, for parents in general, just to walk their kids through money topics. Yeah. Because I know even for parents, a lot of parents are overwhelmed with it themselves. So we want it to be easy in this curriculum to talk to them about budgeting, about saving, about generosity, about how to buy a car, how to open a bank account, all these things that they need to know. We've made it really easy so that it's like an easy conversation. It's not stressful. It doesn't have to be this big, scary topic about money that feels so tedious and boring and overwhelming. We've tried to liven it up and make it easy for parents to walk through with their students. Yeah. Yeah. So with the curriculum, do you, like I said, my daughter's doing it on her own. I've watched a little bit of, of part of it with her, but typically do you recommend that the parent go through it with their student? Um, or do you recommend that the student do this on their own? Am I doing it's it wrong? <laughs> this is great. It's great for the parent to go with it, go through it with their students. We've actually heard testimonials of parents winning with money after taking the curriculum. Maybe they didn't feel like they knew much about finances. And then mm -hmm. afterwards, 
they're reporting getting on a budget and they're reporting actually paying off debt and doing all these incredible things. We yeah. we had a school from a or a story from a public school student who learned it in school so the parent wasn't with her. She learned it in school and then went home and taught her mom how to budget and then a year later she had paid off forty thousand dollars in debt. Wow. So it's just powerful that, yeah. you know, this curriculum it can change multiple lives. It's not just about you know, the students in their lives, but parents can really get empowered through it too. And having worked on the curriculum, you know, I had so many aha moments where I was like, wow, they went really deep into that topic. And I, even after being in this field for, you know, over 10 years, learned yeah. something. So I'm like, wow, that is just so cool to be able to introduce these concepts that literally we all wish we would have known sooner in a yeah. way that's interesting and that kids actually want to pay attention to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I love, I love that you have the curriculum because, you know, even though my husband and I have been through, you know, the Ramsey Finance program many years ago, I have found it difficult to teach. I mean, they our kids learn by example, but it's hard to teach exactly what you're learning. And so I love that you're you're actually <laughs> teaching her for me. Um, well, and you know, there's like I, the I videos in it. That's, yeah, that's huge because right. parents don't want to have to necessarily like go through and process and digest right. all the information themselves and then have to figure out how to like package it well and not misexplain banking, banking topics and right. not misexplain credit scores and what all this stuff means. It's like we actually have videos that yeah. the students walk through and we have auto grading tests. We've got we try to make it as easy as possible for y'all. Um, yeah. So that you can walk through and actually potentially enjoy it as you go through it so that you're not cringing and going, oh, my sure. gosh, money, scary, intimidating. We want it to feel easy and full of hope for for both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys have done a great job. It's a very well done, very professional um, and and easy to understand, easy to to just go through the program. So um, I don't outsource all of our <laughs> curriculum, but this is one that I'm just like, OK, here, watch the video. And then she actually fills out the answers online, which I love. And 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 it keeps the grades and everything for me, which I love. Um, so then I don't have to go back and figure out, like, did you actually understand this concept? Um, I love that the program just encompasses all of that. And it, it um, well, it's nice to hear that from a parent who's actually in it. That's super exciting. Yeah. And we're super stoked. We have more courses coming out later this fall. We're going to have a college prep course. Okay. So everything we've been talking about, we're going to have it in super detail. I'm going to walk through, you know, what are they looking for in essays? I know that like people get super overwhelmed by college and scholarship essays. Mm -hmm. So we're going to walk through exactly, you know, how to actually tactically sit down and write an essay. We're going to walk through what financial aid means, how to find the most merit scholarships at a college. So I'm super stoked about that. I'm working on that right now. And then we have a career readiness course by Ramsey personality, Ken Coleman. Okay. And he's been studying, he's been known as America's career expert. And he's going to walk students through how to get a job and do work that you actually love. So instead of just, you know, just getting a job that's like to make money, how can yeah. you actually find work that you're passionate about that you're going to want to do and yeah. be excited about throughout your life? Yeah, so cool. Do you have a favorite part of the curriculum? I mean, I'm biased, but <laughs> I did the college chapter. Okay. <laughs> but I I just love even just the basic budgeting chapter is so yeah. cool because it's like if students can grasp that early on, what they can do with their lives is astonishing. So I yeah. already love just to be personal for a moment. I love with my kids, I'm already looking at calculators and thinking through like if I teach my kids investing early on and they actually grasp investing as soon as they graduate from college how quickly can they be millionaires mm -hmm. and it's like if kids can figure this out if they can figure out how to budget if they understand investing if they understand never to even get in debt and they graduate from college completely debt free they get a job at 21 22 years old and start investing 15 percent of their income straight away it's crazy what they can achieve the the amount of wealth they can build mm -hmm. by the time they're 40 and 50 it's like they're going to be millionaires by the time you know they're they're my age <laughs> you know that's just incredible to think through they could be these young people with incredible wealth paid off houses and peace around their finances it's just yeah. so exciting so that's the message i really want to get out is you know this whole topic of money i know so many adults feel a lot of shame it feels heavy it feels sticky but there's also this whole other side of money where it's like if we can teach our kids early on to win with money and to never experience the heaviness then for them it's going to be this source of peace and it's going to be this fuel and this excitement where it's like their life is uphill we can take the mistakes that we've made with money and instill great values for our kids to where they just get to build wealth and hopefully by their 30s and 40s you know they're able to do whatever they want if god calls them on a mission field great if they want to be full-time pastors awesome 
They're sitting on a huge amount of savings and investments to where they can literally do whatever they want with their lives and not have to stress about finances. Yeah, yeah, love it. Well, Christina, thank you so much for your time this week. It's been such a great conversation, so encouraging, and um, I'm excited. It's, it's fun at this point in my girls' lives to be talking about this topic specifically and uh, just to help them, um, you know, just become who God created them to become um, without the burden of debt. So thank you so much for your encouragement. We will put all the links to um, everything that we've talked about um, in the show notes um, as we always do. So Christina, thank you again for being with us. I really do appreciate your time this week. It's been fun. Thank you for having me. It's been a joy. Absolutely. And thank you guys for listening. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you back here next week. Bye. A mom said to me one time, aren't you worried about sheltering your children? And I said to her, we care more about sheltering tomato plants in the culture right now than we do about our precious children. And so if someone wants to accuse me of sheltering my children, my answer is always absolutely yes. I will shelter my child until I know my child can stand up against the elements of the culture so that they can grow to maturity. And we slowly begin to remove the shelter from around them as we see that they are mature and that they understand the battle lines around them and can engage the culture from a position of strength rather than weakness.